To create this shatter text effect in DaVinci Resolve, let's hop onto the Fusion page and bring in a P image emitter and also a P render node. Let's uh, also bring in a, a text node and connect that text node directly to the P image emitter node. We're also going to write in the text box whatever text that we want to use uh, for this effect. Let's bring up the size a little bit there too. So now let's go back to the P image emitter node, right click the X density setting and then hit the expression and let's connect that to to the white density setting. So now as you can see that when we adjust the white density uh, setting, the X density will be impacted equally as well. Also, a big thing here to note is that we don't need that many uh, particles. It's going to slow down the system, slow down the rendering big time. So uh, this many right here is um, perfect uh, for our effect. The next thing we're going to do is to come to the style tab and change it from point to bitmap. So now let's uh, bring in a, a background node as well as a triangle masking node. Connect that triangle masking node to the background node and we're going to uh, project this background node onto the screen. So first things first, let's change the color from black to white. We're also going to change the size of the triangle by adjusting by pulling these uh, each one of these angles on the screen. It's very easy to do. Uh, and now let's uh, just connect this background node back to the P image emitter node here. And then let's project this uh, entire effect onto the screen. So you will see that now clearly each one of these particles has uh, now been replaced with the triangle. All right, let's come to P image emitter node and we're going to go back to controls tab, change lifespan first of all to 49, which is the duration of our uh, video clip here. Uh, and we are also going to the velocity settings and the first of all change velocity to uh, 0 0.014 four and then change the velocity variance to 0 0.35 then change the angle z setting here to 90. so what this will do uh, guys is to bring some bring some movement uh, make these particles alive so you will see that they will be uh, a floating uh, moving around in space uh, which is great but they all look exactly the same so what we're going to do is to come to rotation uncheck always face camera change rotation x to 26 change variance to 200 and then change uh, rotation y to 26 change the variance to 112 and then let's also come to spin and then change the z setting uh, to 1.1 and then z variance to 4.89 so now you will see that not only are these moving uh, more particles moving in space they also look like they're floating around so which is uh, more natural and that's exactly what we want for this effect. So the next thing we're going to do is to bring a P turbulence node and we're going to change the X strength to 0 0.031 and then change the Y strength to 0 0.047 and then change the Z strength to two and then bring the density setting all the way up uh, to 100. So this will just make uh, these particle movement more natural in the space. All right, let's disconnect the P render node and then we're going to change the output from 2D to 3D. Now let's bring in a merge uh, 3D node there uh, and we're going to also bring a, a render 3D and then connect that to the media out one. We're also going to create a split screen at this point and project the merge 3D node onto the left screen. All right, so now let's bring in a camera 3D node. And the first thing we're going to do here is on the left hand screen, just bring that camera back quite a bit until this text is at the center of the screen. So at this point, guys, because we put in a camera, uh, you will see that this uh, all these shatter pieces look super cool as a result. Now, one thing we need to do at this point is to copy this uh, text node here and then simply paste it. And then we're going to connect this new node uh, back to the 3D uh, render node as a background. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do here is to basically uh, create this exact uh, same text, but uh, using its whole, this original form. So we're going to bring up the size, change the position, also maybe perhaps leverage the tracking setting here but the idea is that we want this whole text to sort of hover over uh this uh, shatter text uh because this is how we're going to kind of switch from the shattered effect to the original to do that let's go to the shading tab and keyframe the opacity setting here then let's move over a frame bring opacity to zero now let's go to the merge node here, uh, keyframe the blend setting here, and then move back a frame and then blend, uh, bring blend setting down to zero as well. So you will see that now the switch between the original text and the shatter text is going to be super smooth. 
So uh, one thing we're going to do, guys, at this point is to just go back to the edit page, let this affect our render out, and you will see that, guys, this is looking pretty slick. So this is pretty much kind of the, the shattered effect that we are, we're going for here. Uh, the only thing I will say right now is that we need to reverse it uh, to achieve kind of what we saw uh, earlier in the intro. To achieve that, we are simply just going to bring a time stretcher node, place that at the end of the workflow, and uh, at this point, change the source time to uh, 48, and then go to the end of this clip, and then we're going to change that to zero. So uh, if we were to go back to uh, the uh, edit page, uh, and then adjust this render out, you guys will see that. By doing this, we've simply now reversed the water. So now instead of the text breaking out into shatter pieces, it is now the opposite. But, but one thing you will see that is that uh, all these shatter pieces look kind of kind of wonky. So we're gonna go back to the fusion page, change interpolation from blend to nearest, that will fix it. Also, another thing you can do is to go to the spline editor and then change the interpolation, the easing these out between these two frames. But for the sake of this example, I'm actually not going to do that. Instead, I want to show you an alternative, which from my experience has worked uh, pretty well. So let's go back to the edit page and then uh, hit a quick export there, just to uh, kind of uh, render out this effect. Okay, so now we have our exported clip here in the media pool. Simply just drag that into the timeline. And once again, this is exactly the same effect that we created earlier. It's just now it's a finished clip. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, in order to create that speed ramp effect uh, is right click and then in the menu, let's select the read time controls. And then uh, over here, we're going to create one speed point and then towards the end of this clip, create another uh, speed point. And then uh, for the section that's kind of in the middle here, this long stretch, we're going to change the speed to uh, 400. And then uh, we're going to just stretch out, extend the end there so that we still have the whole thing, uh, the whole effect. And then let's come to the first part here, uh, change that speed to 75 instead. Uh, and then stretch out the end once again so that we have the whole effect. So you guys will see that now we're going from kind of this slow start to a fast finish. Uh, now let's uh, right click uh, this clip again and then go to retime curve. So we're going to just change up the interpolation, click that point, change it to easing ease out, and then we're going to hold down the command key and then stretch this left of a zero point uh, uh, out quite a bit there. Uh, and then uh, we can continue to adjust this uh, interpolation uh, and uh, until it is until that transition from fast to uh, for, for, from slow to fast is smooth uh, is to your liking uh, so at this point guys you will see that it is quite nice uh, that's exactly kind of how how we want uh, okay so let's close up this retime uh, curve and then one thing we can also do is to go to the retime and scaling section here uh, and uh, change the uh, retime process to optical flow and then change motion estimation to enhance better at this render. And again, this will just help with a smoother playback. But this is pretty much it, you guys. Um, you know, feel free to experiment with this and there's a lot you can do. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I will see you next time.